sir. Has anyone in here ever heard of cryptozoology? Cryptozoology. A few of you. Do you know what it means? What is, what is cryptozoology, Bianca? I believe it deals with something about small creatures or something. You're very close. <laughs> You're very close, Ken. Well, I know they things called cryptoviruses, and these are like hidden, hard to find. Uh, Biological system. Good, we're still getting closer. You know? I've just heard the word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, and there's an honest man. That was my question. Has anyone heard of this? You got one? Well, I think I heard something close to crypto, like crypto uh, uh, chain. Crypto chain. Mm, I'm not sure. That's I'm not sure. That's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like ah. she's thinking encryption. <laughs> ah, no. That, we're getting further away now. <laughs> I, I need to just talk. So, um, cryptozoology is the study of mythical or probably mythical creatures. Oh. So, Bigfoot is a cryptozoological creature. The Loch Ness Monster is a cryptozoological creature. Probably one of the least known cryptozoological creatures is the rod. Has anyone heard of a rod in terms of being a creature? Here's the theory about rods, okay? Rods are these creatures that are like cylindrical things, like anywhere from two inches to a foot long, and they're flying around. They're numerous throughout the world, flying around all the time, but they fly so fast that the human eye cannot see them. There are people who actually believe this, okay? All right, so that's rods. One day I was sitting at Wrigley Field watching a baseball game. Uh, this would have been about 15 years ago when they were, what were they known as? The lovable losers, losers the Chicago Cubs. Right? You could get a ticket anytime to any game you wanted because they always lost like 100 games every year. So I was sitting in the bleachers just enjoying the game, struck up a conversation with this woman next to me. We kind of talked on and off throughout the game, hit it off, not on a like dating level, but on a like kind of professional or both like people in business or whatever kind of level, right? Um, one of the things she said to me when we, when we were talking about what we do and I told her I taught improv classes as one of the things I did, she said, oh, you know what? My husband and I have always wanted to see improv. We live in Chicago, grew up here. Neither of us has ever seen an improv show. So we talked about improv for a while, etc. At the end of the game, we exchanged contact information, again, kind of on a professional business type level. So I contacted her a couple of weeks later, and I said, hey, you said you and your husband have always wanted to see improv. Well, I've done improv all over the city at every theater that is here. I know like what all the shows are about. What, what do you guys want to see? And I, I talked to them. We figured out you know, some improv that they would like, and I went with them, with her and her husband, who had, he hadn't been at the game, by the way. She wasn't there at the game alone. So I went with the two of them to an improv show. We stayed in touch, and a few months later, after a few interviews, I had a full-time job offer from her company. Now, here's the thing that makes that kind of strange. Her company did something that I have never had any involvement with, which is corporate recruiting. I've never been in that field, no knowledge about it at all, yet I had a full-time job offer from this company. I ended up turning it down, but I spoke to this woman afterwards, and I said, I'm really curious. It's kind of a bizarre thing that I just got a full-time job offer in a field I have literally no experience in and no training in. I said, why did you want to hire me, your company? She said, well, when we were at that baseball game, it struck me that you were, that we, I was enjoying the conversation very much with you, okay? But then, at the end of the game, or after the game, when you contacted me and said, remember you said that you and your husband always wanted to see improv? Do you want to go actually see some improv? And then you took us out to see improv. She said, that sealed it for me. Because in 99 conversations, this is again her talking, in 99 conversations, she said, out of 100, that comment, nothing would have ever come of it. It was just a little throwaway comment I made. But instead, because of the way you handled it, we actually ended up going to see improv, something we've wanted to do our whole lives. And she said, you are, that is exactly the kind of person I want to have in my company. Well, and I told her, 
You know what, it's interesting you say that. That is simply something I learned from taking improv class. Because <laughs> when you take improv class, see, most people think that doing improv is about thinking of funny, clever things off the top of your head. That's why people think it's hard. You know, I could never do that. I couldn't think of funny things to say off the top of my head. In reality, improv is not about thinking of funny things to say off the top of your head. Improv is about paying extremely close attention to your scene partner and not throwing away anything that they say. Literally, every little thing that your scene partner does or says, your job as an improviser is to react to that, to make something of what they just gave you. And it was simply through that that I got this job offer in a field I had never uh, had any experience in. Today I teach improv for business at UIC. So I teach our business students how to use improvisational skills in their careers. One of the assignments I give my students is to go out into the world and talk to strangers. Literally one week out of my course, they have to spend seven days of their daily lives going and talking to as many strangers as they can. Okay? And I cannot tell you, I've been teaching there for four years, I have had students get internships because they started a conversation with a random woman on the Metra and she happened to work at a finance firm and my student is a finance student and eventually they, she got them an internship. I've had students get internships, I've had them get free tickets to shows just from starting a conversation with strangers. Here is my theory, okay? My theory is that opportunities are like rods. Opportunities are flying all around us, all of the time, yet we are oblivious to them, we're not seeing them, because we're not reaching out to connect with anybody around us. Okay? I believe if you start the habit of simply starting conversations with people wherever you are, there are going to be things that happen, things that come your way that wouldn't have come your way otherwise. Now I do have to give an epilogue. You don't want to be one of these obnoxious people who tries to have a conversation with someone when they're clearly not wanting to have it, right? So I have to be careful about that. I've got to pay attention to those vibes. If I'm on a plane, I always try to start a conversation with the person next to me, but I also pay attention to their vibes, and if they're not into it, I'm not going to force it. So that's the only caveat. But my guess is, if you make this a habit, start conversations with people throughout your daily life, you're going to get benefits that you probably would never have even thought of because they were just rods flying around you and you non-believer in cryptozoological creatures, you were completely oblivious. Thank you very much, everybody.